Welcome to Esquire Group's latest video. Foreign LLCs are not taxed the same as US LLCs. My name is Jimmy Sexton, LLM. I am the founder and CEO of Esquire Group. Now, before we get into this topic, a disclaimer, a little cover your ass, because we are talking about US tax. This presentation is prepared for educational purposes only. This presentation is not legal or tax advice, nor is it to be construed as such. Each individual circumstances are different. You should seek legal and or tax advice to address any specific questions you may have. Now let's jump into it. There's a very common misconception that foreign LLCs are taxed the same as US LLCs. And I have seen countless US clients get into trouble because they think that a foreign LLC is taxed the same as a US LLC when in fact they are taxed quite differently and not knowing the difference can have very severe tax consequences including potential penalties. I think in order to illustrate this best we first need to talk about how domestic US LLCs are taxed then we'll talk about how foreign LLCs are taxed and then I'll explain the, the, the dangers because I think in, or, in order to be able to explain it properly, we need to know how each is taxed first. So the default taxation, as most people know, of a US LLC is if it's a single member LLC, meaning it has one owner because in LLC lingo, an owner is called a member. So the default taxation of a domestic US single member LLC is that of a disregarded entity meaning the entity is disregarded for US income tax purposes. There's no entity level tax, meaning the LLC itself doesn't pay any tax. Rather, all the income is reported on the owner's tax return. So for example, if I owned an LLC and operated a consulting business through it, the LLC itself would not file a tax return. Rather, all that in all those income and expenses would be reported on my individual tax return on Schedule C. If the LLC has more than one member, so more than one owner, so a multi-member LLC, so the default taxation of a US multi-member LLC is that of a partnership. Again, much like the disregarded entity, there's no entity level tax. The multi-member LLC being treated like a partnership does have to file form 1065 but that's an information return that basically shows all the income expenses and assets of the partnership and then the, along with the 1065 each partner will get a schedule k1 and they'll report their share of the partnership's income and expenses on their individual tax returns but u.s llc's u.s domestic llc's are known as what's called an eligible entity, meaning they're eligible to elect to be taxed differently than their default taxation. So a US LLC can also elect to be taxed as a corporation. They do this by filing form 8832. They can be taxed as either a C corporation or an S corporation. And they can be a corporation, it can be taxed as a corporation regardless of the number of owners. So you can have a single member LLC taxed as a corporation or a multi-member LLC taxed as a corporation. With a C corporation, there is entity level tax and meaning the LLC itself does pay income tax. And then when it pays a dividend to its shareholder, it again has to pay, the shareholder again has to pay income tax. It has to file form 1120. If it's treated as an S corporation, there is no entity level tax. It functions much like a partnership where the S corporation itself does not pay tax. It does have to file form 1120S, but all the income and expenses of the S corporation are reported on the owner's tax returns. So to recap, default taxation, single member LLC treated as a disregarded entity, multi-member LLC treated as a partnership, but because it's an eligible entity, a US domestic LLC can elect to be treated as either a C corporation or S corporation. This is very, very different from foreign LLCs, which we're going to talk about now. So in contrast to the default taxation, disregarded entity and partnership with the option to elect to be treated as a corporation, foreign LLCs are by default treated as a corporation, a foreign corporation. 
Now, a foreign corporation is not going to be liable for U.S. tax unless it's engaged in a U.S. trade or business. But the U.S. shareholder of a foreign corporation may have tax consequences. Because a foreign corporation is itself a taxable entity, although the corporation is not paying tax in the United States unless it's engaged in a trade or business, the U.S. shareholders may have tax obligations under subpart F or guilty. An oversimplification of subpart F and guilty is if a foreign corporation has passive income like interest, dividends, rents, royalties, capital gains, then the U.S. shareholder has to report their share of the foreign corporation's subpart F income, which is passive income, on their individual tax return as ordinary income. So currently for an individual shareholder that would be up to 37%. If it doesn't have passive income and it's an active business, right, like consulting or it owns some sort of a store or a hotel or something overseas, then it would be subject to guilty. And guilty is the U.S. shareholders would be liable for this guilty tax also up to 37%, but there is if for an individual shareholder, but there is an election that can be made to only pay 10.5%. So if there's passive income, subpart F applies to a foreign corporation, up to 37% tax for the U.S. shareholders. If guilty applies, for argument's sake, let's just say 10.5% tax on all the profits of the foreign corporation if they're not passive. Additionally, the U.S. shareholders are going to need to file, most likely file form 5471, which is a very complex and burdensome uh, information return in order to re report the information on owners and the financial activities of the foreign corporation, and form 926 to report any transfers of assets to, including cash, to the foreign corporation. So this is very different from an LLC. And one of the main differences, and, and, and this is what I see quite a bit, is a lot of people put real estate in US LLCs, right? It provides great asset protection and you don't need to file a separate tax return. You just report all the income and loss and capital gain from the sale of the real estate, for example, on your individual tax return. Well, a lot of people think, oh, well, if I'm gonna buy real estate in a foreign country, I'm gonna utilize this same strategy and I'm gonna buy the real estate using a foreign LLC. Well, guess what? Because that foreign LLC is treated as a foreign corporation for US tax purposes by default, and I'll get into the elections you can make in a minute, but because it's treated like that by default, all of the rental income, and more importantly, the capital gain, does not flow through as the same character of income that of a capital gain through the foreign corporation. So if a foreign corporation, for example, sells the real estate and realizes a capital gain, that capital gain is gonna be subpart F income subject to up to 37% tax because it is a passive income. Had that flown through a disregarded entity, it would have been subject to the long-term capital gains tax rate of only 20%. So there's a big difference between the taxation of a disregarded entity or partnership and that of a foreign corporation. The compliance costs are higher for filing the necessary information reforms on a foreign corporation and also the tax consequences due to subpart F and guilty will generally result in higher tax than if you had a disregarded entity or a partnership in, some, in, in most circumstances. So that's the default taxation of a foreign LLC. But most foreign LLCs are also eligible entities and can elect to be treated as a disregarded entity or a partnership, just like the default taxation of US LLCs. But it doesn't happen automatically. You have to file an election on Form 8832. You can have the foreign LLC elect to be treated as a disregarded entity if it is a single member LLC, there will be no US entity level tax. However, the single member owner will need to file form 8858 to report certain financial and other information about 
the foreign LLC to the IRS. If it is a multi-member LLC, it can elect to be taxed as a foreign partnership, which may require the filing of Form 8865 to give certain financial and other information to the IRS. There would be no U.S. entity level tax though. So to recap, the default taxation of U.S. LLCs is disregard an entity in the case of a single member, partnership in the case of a multi-member. The default taxation of a foreign LLC is that of a foreign corporation, okay? And those are quite taxed quite differently and you need to know the difference because the consequences, the tax consequences can be quite harsh. A US LLC can elect to be treated as a corporation while a foreign LLC can elect to be treated as a disregarded entity or a partnership. Again, the big danger here is somebody thinking Somebody setting up a foreign LLC and believing that it's treated like a US LLC, thinking that they're operating a disregarded entity or a partnership, when in reality they're operating a foreign corporation. And again, the filing requirements are different, the tax treatment are different, the tax consequences can be substantial. Now, there's advantages and disadvantages for each one of these tax treatments that need to be analyzed on a case-by-case -case basis, which brings me to my pro tip. People always ask me, well, what's the best way to classify my LLC? Whether it's foreign or domestic, they ask, well, what's the best way? Well, there is no blanket best way, right? The best way depends on what's best given your particular situation, which requires an analysis and outlining the advantages and disadvantages of each tax classification that's possible for the LLC and then picking which one of those classifications suits your situation best. Anyway, I hope you found this information useful. We, see, we will see you on the next Esquire Group video. Later.